You know, I should probably put a voice over here for our sponsor. Nah, you can read. Proven nutrition. Nature inspired. Science backed. Is that it? You know, I got a couple taglines that I can go and just toss in here for variety if you guys like to hear them. Proven nutrition. Drink it. Or else. Now, yeah, you know, I heard it was bad when I said it. What's that? I'm fired? Okay, then. It's time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know one of the nice things that you get here is when you find savages, you find them in different places. I happen to know a few who live out in San Diego, and one of the nice things about that is when you run into somebody who's got military experience, he wins a nice championship belt in MMA, but his heart lies in jiu-jitsu, you want to talk to that person and find out what the hell they are doing with their lives. So I guess what I have to say for you is this. If you want to meet somebody who's an awesome human being, you meet one Nick Battis. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do that right now. Let's say hello to our friend Nick Battis. How are you doing, sir? I'm great. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Raph. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it was a lot all right. of nice words. Yeah, we, I mean, here's the thing. You're a good guy. Um, we happen to know a lot of the same people who are our homies. Yep. Um, a lot of unfortunate human beings. Uh, you know, Juan Bernardo is not exactly one of the world's <laughs> leading best people, uh, but he'll do. Uh, but I remember very distinctly, he had mentioned when we had a grappling tournament, he had, he had thrown your name around, and for whatever reason, we couldn't get you to go compete with us. And I was so mad at you because I knew enough about you. I knew about your ability to come bring it in competition. And I was a little disappointed that we couldn't make that work. Yeah, um, if I recall, I don't know what was going on. I might have been like Thailand or another tournament or something. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I remember because I had wanted to get onto like an EBI, I was really into grappling at the time and really wanted to step up on that kind of platform. But I just, I got into fighting and then started, started kind of pushing my jujitsu ju back a little bit. And now I'm really excited to just kind of get back in into the jujitsu world for a little bit, actually. I mean, that makes sense. And the, the hard part that I don't know that people understand is when you have to give up, uh, having jujitsu as a thing. It's not like it's an easy thing. Like not even it's people terrible. hate having to give that up. Yeah, I mean it, that's life right there. It's jujitsu, honestly. So if you mm. can't get on the mats and like I'm forced to be hitting a bag or or working on something else, then it's like uh, it's you know you got to get it done. But at the same time, it's like your love is right next door on those mats where you get to just kind of lose yourself. And a couple torn knees will do that to you for a little while, though. Is that what happened? You had a couple torn knees going there? Uh, meniscus, LCL. Uh, MCL uh, on both knees but so just a lot of physical therapy and you're back in the game you know you just got to take the time to actually do those bullshit booty band workout exercises and get <laughs> get your knees back and back going it's you with a whole bunch of uh, ladies who want to get like their beach body and you're just like <laughs> what up what up Kim Kim you're doing your greatest you're living your yeah. best life yeah I wish that were the case but typically it's me in like a hot garage just sweating my ass off <laughs> with bands and some sweats or something let's tell me about this because i want people to know right off the back you just won a championship with tough enough over in vegas tell us a little bit about how that fight came together and how it went down well so i mean all of my fights go through my coach really uh tony palafox at victory mma he gets he gets all of our fights for us and handles everything and he tries to just get with the best organizations possible and tough enough was one of those opportunities that we had uh, they've seen our fights before and knew that we were going after nothing but professionalness. Like we were going to be on weight. We were going to show up and they, they came forward with their, with their, uh, with their whole idea of pack the Mac and just really filled the stadium. And it was, it was an insane card with just so many people. Um, I mean, I guess that's, that's what happens when you give out free tickets and <laughs> give like 12 championships or something like that on one card. It yeah. was, it was just a great card and a wonderful opportunity. So when that opportunity comes up and you've got a lot of people there, there's a lot of hype, there's a lot of, I'm sure, nerves, there's a lot of everything that you're feeling as a fighter. Um, what are you like fight week? Uh, fight week? Well, so first off, this was a really long camp because I had two previous fights that fell through because opponents backed out. But that's something you got to expect at the amateur level. You know, Fair. that's it's going to happen. So I was, I was ready for it, just kept in good spirits. Uh, but fight week, typically I'm actually okay. Um, I'm actually more antsy because we're, we're, we're taking off to like taking away two a days. Uh, so we're, you're only training once a day and I just, I never feel like it's enough. Hmm. So I always want to get back in there and like train more and go harder. 
Um, but you're, you're healing up and you're kind of, you're kind of trying to just get your mind right. So if anything, physically antsy, but then in my mind, I'm just starting to get down to visualizing more and kind of just working out all the little kinks in my game. Mm. So I'm feeling good. And, uh, the weight cut typically isn't too bad either. Um, cause I don't know, starving just doesn't seem that hard from like wrestling in high school and everything. Uh, <laughs> if you diet, diet well enough, you only have to do, you know, a little water cut. Sure. And that's how I, that's how I prefer to do it. Is that what started for you? Did you start off as a wrestler? Yeah, I wrestled. I wrestled a, a couple of years in high school, uh, mostly like football. But then I got into wrestling, and it was kind of just like, oh, this is, this is awesome. And then mm -hmm. from there, you know, military and whatnot. And then that is really when everything kind of turned around for me. It's dope. We're gonna come back to your military experience, but I want to uh, continue on. So fight week comes. You're antsy when it finally gets the moment. Day of, you know, walk us through what what starts your day and what gets you to right before you enter the cage. All right. So for this case, since it was a uh, day before weigh-ins, but uh, at like around 5 p.m. So we had a light cut the night before just to get us maybe around like five pounds. And then in the morning, we still just like ate a light snack. And this whole time I was uh, training with or we were cutting with and getting ready for her fight as well. Nadine mm. uh, from Victory also. And so we're kind of just trying to keep in good spirits. You know, you're getting ready to just cut some water weight and everything but really i just woke up we had a very small breakfast and we kind of just hung out kind of chilled for a while a few hours because the cut because uh the weigh-ins were so late at night uh at 5 p.m that we kind of just kicked back and like kind of conserve energy you know relax you're in vegas you can't do any of the fun stuff so you're just looking out the freaking window just trying to trying to sleep and conserve energy and then around uh, around like 12 or so, 12 or 1, we started our cut. Uh, I just put a, a sweatsuit on, did some cardio, got the sweat going. And then once I start sweating, it just flows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like just – it's pretty easy for me. Uh, so I, I cut down, uh, just, just did like the elliptical for maybe half an hour, 45 minutes to get that sweat going. Mm -hmm. a, little, a little burrito to keep, keep all that heat in for a little while. Sure. And then, and then uh, an Epsom salt bath hopped right in there, um, and then just stayed in there for about half an hour. Got out, got back into the burrito, and I was a pound under, one forty four. So, when you come in go. a pound under, do you feel like, man, I could have had that apple? Uh, no. Well, so we had an hour before weigh-ins, so I was like, okay, I get to have a few sips of this like Pedialyte right here. Yes, I'm already winning. <laughs> So I was pretty happy about that because I didn't expect to be done with the cut after one bath. That yeah. was pretty, yeah, that was, a, that was a nice little treat. That's awesome. Well, one of the things I like about this is you mentioned that you were able to do that with a teammate from Victory MMA where you trade out of San Diego. That's got to feel pretty good that you've got a partner in crime going into that. Oh, it was great, especially since she had all the snacks. She was, <laughs> she was so prepared with just all the healthy snacks and just ready to go. I was kind of just... Uh, just ready to just sit there and deal with the pain of not eating anything, and <laughs> she she saved me on a bunch of those, especially after weigh-in. She had all the like good sweets and everything, like a big tub of Nutella and cookies oh. and all kinds of. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> what is it that you crave the most when you're actually in the middle of your camp? It changes a little bit. It changes a little bit. Like, uh, so when I'm when I'm like really starting to taper off for the diet, I'll pretty much stop eating meat. Mm. or like red meats and kind of just go on to fish and uh, vegetables and fruits and everything. And then so I'll start craving meat at that point because it's, you know, it's taken out of my diet. I can't have a good steak anymore. Sure. And then I'll cut out even the fish and I'll kind of just be mostly vegetarian. And then so honestly, I think, I think at that point I kind of start craving carbs a lot. For mm. something. Like, like I will really want pasta and stuff at that point. And then during the water cut, I just want to drink water. <laughs> yeah, no. But I just the, don't want to have a dry mouth. You yeah, know? the worst is trying to explain to people, like, yeah, water's what they can't have and is what they need. But it's also one of the few things that you're like, I thought that was good for me. <laughs> it makes you appreciate it more, though. It makes yeah. you appreciate, like, how much, how, how delicious water really mm. is. Because some, some people are used to just, you know, drinking, drinking a Coke every day or something. And it's like... There really is something too, like what you need to live. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. I I appreciate that the most. So you get all the way to fight night. When you're there, you're about to enter the cage. Um, you know, you don't know that you're gonna a hundred percent win. You know, in your head, I'm gonna win, right? 
Yeah, you absolutely. don't know that somebody's going to wrap a title around you for sure until you're like, oh, fuck, three rounds later. That's what happened. Yeah. So tell well, us what happens once uh, the fight went in. Well, for me, it's like I'm going to win or I'm going to die. That's how I treat these fights. It's mm. like where it is it is a battle for life and death. If there was no referee in there, what would happen? You know, yeah, yeah. You're, you're not going to let go because someone's tapping. You're going to break something. Yeah. You're going to choke them out. Uh, but so I'm walking to the cage. I'm just trying to I'm I'm pretty like blank faced just trying to I'm in my zone I'm getting getting kind of a little too amped up sometimes <laughs> uh getting ready for that adrenaline dump to hit you know and being like yeah. all right fight through it but really I'm just trying to like hit a point where I'm not thinking at all mm. where I'm just I'm just ready to go and kind of like reading my emotions a little bit like it's it's easy to mistake all of that adrenaline for something like anger but really it's just kind of trying to get into a zone where i'm just not thinking i'm kind of a blank canvas and i'm just ready to ready to paint that canvas with uh my opponent's blood a little bit <laughs> <laughs> i like that you say that a little too calmly so uh yeah. it's a little terrifying to me uh you had a great fight dude and, and one of the things i always like and I, you know it's hard for me not to root for somebody who loves jiu-jitsu with a passion so whenever you see in the ufc and you know that person probably won't win but it's the jiu-jitsu guy yeah. you go I really would like to see them win, yeah, despite science on. and probability <laughs> saying they will. Yeah, um, more advocates for jujitsu. But but a big thing that I was really impressed with when I got to see your fight was your composure, and I think your your stand up looked very solid, dude. So I think those were Thank two you. areas Thank that you. I was, you know, especially again being on the jujitsu side when you go, oh, he can strike, and he's jujitsu. <laughs> That's what we need, everybody. Well, so that's one of the things I kind of like to do is uh, I, I'll take my strength and that that'll be my my kind of last trick that I got in my pocket, you know. So I try to work on the weaknesses like so I believe that my biggest weakness is my striking. Mm. So that's what I'm going to work the hardest. That's what I'm going to work the most. And this camp kind of it, it was very rewarding because I saw it and I was like, oh, wow, my striking has improved tenfold since my last fight. And I always feel like I have something to prove out there, like to show my weakness and to show that it's gotten better and that I'll take this wherever you want to bring it. You know, like I'm going to control this fight wherever it's going to go. And that's what that's the point I'm trying to get to, honestly. And to do that, you just have to keep picking out those weaknesses and getting them better. Absolutely. And it's difficult. I mean, it's, uh, you know, jujitsu isn't easy to begin with, period. Wrestling is definitely not easy. Uh, but you combine those things and then you add striking into it you add an element of, all right, now you're kind of going out of a zone that feels maybe a little comfortable. And I like yeah. that that challenge that you're putting against yourself. What surprised you in this fight? Was there anything that kind of uh, maybe something you didn't expect or something that you found inside the cage that you had to adapt to? Yeah, I didn't think I was going to get taken down immediately <laughs> in the fight. <laughs> so uh, that, I was really disappointed with that. I threw a, <laughs> uh, threw a low kick. I knew he likes catching low kicks, but he, he did a perfect job on that single leg. Uh, he just grabbed it, ran me down, and I had to fight off my back for a lot longer than I would have liked to. Um, it all, I guess it also kind of surprised me how well I did off my back, though, because mm. I, I, I prepare for being on, on top. I'm a top guy. I don't, I don't want to fight off my back. I don't want someone in my guard. Yeah. I don't like taking those chances. I like being the dominant person, you know? Yeah. And, but I thought I kept my composure pretty well, even though I ended up getting in some weird, awkward position for a little while. <laughs> sure. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so the biggest thing that surprised me was his takedown. Um, other than that, it, the fight went my way for most of most yeah. of it besides that first round. What was maybe the best piece of advice you got mid-rounds? Because we went, uh, if I'm correct, this went to a third round? Yeah, it went to the third round with about 30 seconds left, I believe. Uh, the biggest piece of advice that just really kind of helped me out was when, when my coach sat me down and he was just like, he's tired. He's mm. tired because I was exhausted. <laughs> I, was, and I was like, all right, he's tired. Okay, I got this. Like, and and I, I was done. Like, like I said, the adrenaline dump happens. So you yeah. just keep moving. You got to learn to kind of live in, in that like moment of torture of just like a pain and like exhaustion. You got to kind of learn to to see that that's, that should be the norm mm -hmm. is that that level of exhaustion. Because like if you're completely tired and you're still still able to move, then you have that looseness with it. You have that flow with it. Mm -hmm. And so I was trying to find that. And he said he was tired. I was like, all right, cool. Let's get this in. And he came out and he was, you could tell he was tired. So mm -hmm. it kind of really motivated me to just keep pushing it, keep pushing the pace, stand in the middle and make him go against the cage and push him back. 
That's dope, dude. And 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 what was the finish for people who haven't seen it? Because I know we put it up on our site. Uh, just because when I saw it, I was like, yo, people should see this, man. <laughs> but I also, if people haven't seen it, what what would they see? And, and why would, should they go look at that? Uh, well, all right. You're going to see one of my favorite types of finishes. And it's pretty brutal. Um, and you're going to see some jujitsu in there, you know? So that's why that's enough reason right there to go check it out. And it's it's honestly one of my favorite moves in jujitsu. I like staying on top this way, too. I don't roll my back or anything, mm-hmm. but... So I ended with a a, uh, a mounted a mounted triangle and just ground and pound from hell, yeah. and it would have been even worse if there could have been some elbows because that that would have been because at the, the amateur level they don't allow for those elbows is what that is yeah, or under yeah. okay under under the amateur levels depending on state rules vary sure. uh, especially depending on organization so with tough enough uh, there's actually no elbows at all so no elbows yeah. in the body. Uh, no elbows to the head, obviously either. So, so it's just raining down, raining down punches from a mounted triangle, and it was, it was actually funny because I couldn't decide if uh, <laughs> I wanted to just finish it with a choke, sure, or, or but I was so amped up, I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> to be one hundred percent sure, there was uh, not hesitation, but you get to that point where you've earned this dominant position, you're kind of like. Uh, you got that Ricky Bobby, yeah. like, I don't know what to do with my hands, <laughs> where you're just like, should I, oh, and like, I, yeah. I 100% saw the look of elbows in your face, <laughs> but I was also thinking to myself, I go, man, that's so clean, because especially when you know the result, you're like, I know he won, but it's really fun to go back and watch uh, how. So yeah. for me, I'm, I mean, I'm a big journey person, and when I saw, I was like, oh, there is jujitsu there. Hold on here. Is he going to finish with this choke? And I was like, oh, no, he's going the... Yeah. the ball grounded powder out that's terrible yeah it's it's pretty hard to get in a less dominant position yep. than a mounted triangle so that it felt great to be able to go to the third round and then finish it with only 30 seconds left it's like hey no question you know you never want to leave it to the judges so oh, dude. That was, yeah that's dope especially with those last 30 seconds you know it really does show a good sense of resolve because you know you, you're admitting you're you're tired but you find out mid round or in between the rounds when your coach is kind of like, nah, look, he tired. And you're like, Oh, dope. So yeah. <laughs> that's going to be a I mean, great feeling. And it's always, it's always go for the finish. You know, that's how we yep. train, like go for the finish. You don't, you don't try to just kind of <laughs> lean rounds out or anything. You got to keep moving and keep pushing for that, for that kill. Yeah. Def, I've trained at victory. I, I, <laughs> yeah. First head 100%. Uh, I've, I've trained with a number of people there who I'm always like, Oh my God, y'all. Oh, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm old. I can't be doing this hey, forever. You know, you come on over, train a little bit more. Well, Go. okay. Uh, here's what I want the people to understand what's happening behind the scenes. So uh, we've had a little bit of technical difficulty, and I like that I'm kidding around. I'm just like, Nick, I'm really sorry. And he's just like, Raph, no problem. It's okay. Everything's fine. <laughs> and I got to the point where now he's starting to bust my balls where there's like a second complication that's complicating the first complication. And he's like, what's the matter, Raph? Can't get I this mean, through? It's only been like an hour, hour and a half. First of all, okay, you know, listen. Being very courteous. Oh, my God. Now <laughs> now he's starting to bust balls. And I say to him, I'm like, listen, I know enough people who are very, very solid at their jiu-jitsu who are at the victory. And he's just like, why don't you come down here? And I was like, you think I'm challenging you? Dork. I've seen your work. I know exactly who to send your way. And I'm like, no, no, no. You send yeah, some that's of that what I'm saying. You should, you should come down and train with us. I'm, we all... I see your little your your awesome wrestling videos. I want to learn some of those leg locks. That's fair. Right? Yeah. Hey, you know what? Honestly, this is one hundred percent the truth, my man. Uh, my friends who I train with are not at all afraid of like my arm bars or getting caught with a kimura or getting caught with their back or any of their leg attacks. They are legitimately afraid of getting caught with a Boston crab, a sharpshooter, <laughs> a figure four leg lock because they're like, there's no coming back from that. Like. You get yeah. caught with an armbar. You're just doing jujitsu. You get caught with a figure four leg lock. You're like, hold on. Oh god, something, something didn't didn't go my, well. My spine just cracked in half. So that's that's great. Yeah. To be fair, though, I have variations that I do. If you're mean to me, I use the full spine version. If you're fairly nice to me, I do that thing where I do like the squat where I'm not fully sitting on their back. And so uh, I usually tell the people, I'm like, you if you feel like it really hurts just ask yourself how you roll with me see i'd love to know those setups for that i, w- I would 100 percent be happy to show you those setups however you cannot mount and triangle me in any way uh, <laughs> that, that's verboten uh you can't actually use jujitsu or punching me uh, oh all right yeah which i so guess this muay thai 
I was about to say it leaves no, no, not more time. <laughs> I don't even want to do wrestling with you. Yeah, let's go back to Gee. The Gee sounds fine. Oh man, all right, you might get me there then. All right. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I got to put the Gee back on. No lie though, uh, we have a good friend of mine who is a um, an MMA fighter, uh, part of the Jean Jacques affiliation. He's super dope, man. He's so nice. We were at some fights recently, and it ended in a Vaughn flute choke. And he looked at me and he goes, "What's that, man?" And I go, well, you don't know what that is? And I'm like, but that's yeah. a no-gi thing, too. Well, it's no-gi, but he's looking at it, and it was it happened in an MMA fight. So he's oh, just kind of wow. like, dude, I want to learn that. And I was like, I'm not <laughs> teaching you that because that will tell you what to do with me. <laughs> I was like, you shoot in for too many uh, really, really bad like low shots. singles with your oh, shots. Yeah. And I'm like, sometimes that's my way of saying, hey, listen, you chill out because I've got these extra options. So everybody be cool. Uh, but he was just, he just holding like, him there with a guillotine. What are you talking about? Dog, I've been like, it's so funny because it's like, it, like, you know how sometimes when somebody has like a really good wrestler and they like overcommit to that guillotine oh, or yeah. whatever. Do it all the time. And you're just like, you're like, dude, they're so powerful, but they don't know that they're stuck to me now. You know, it really helps to like, just try to lose your neck completely. So just I mean, get here's the nice part. <laughs> I will say this. I have been told I have a rather large head. So uh, that probably helps. Probably it's helps. it's like a golden goose to some of the people who are like, I want to choke that giant head. <laughs> uh, anyway, enough about me and my shittiness. I'll come train with you. I would love to train with you, sir. So that would uh, not be a problem. Uh, but I want to ask you this: um, two things. Number one, how is your percentage on your your phone doing? Oh, yeah. Let me check that out real quick. We're good. I'm at seven still. Fuck. We've got a good amount of time. Let's get that video All back right. up. All right. <laughs> I want to go ahead and transition to this. I want to know a little bit more about how you got into the military. So you said it was a progression from wrestling to the military, but I feel that like there's a little bit more behind that story. How'd you end up in the military, man? Oh, okay. Well, so, I mean, graduated high school, was a little restless, was going to, uh, you know, could have went to a different, a uh, few different, like, D3 colleges for football or wrestling or something. Didn't really have the money for that, though, even. Mm-hmm. I'd still have, I'd still have a... Uh, all those student loans and everything. So I wasn't really going for that. I was 18. Didn't know what to do really. Uh, so I just got a regular job, you know, I worked at Lowe's for about a year and I, I bullshitted with school. Really. I went to community college and took a few classes, got some C's, you know, uh, wasn't really, wasn't really actually into it or being disciplined with it. Mm. And I, I wanted to do something. I wanted to do something meaningful. And there was this war, war going on in Afghanistan. And I think the young man in me was just pursuing that fight, uh, just something, putting my life on the line for something that's worth more than, than yourself, really. And I didn't really, I wasn't able to really kind of learn this until I was, I was in. But, but once I was in, I kind of figured out that you're laying down everything for, for your brothers right next to you. Mm. It's not about the war. It's not about anything else. But it becomes about like that, that man next to you. And so I grew up in the military for like four years. Uh, I, I enlisted as an infantryman, even though I got the scores to, to have a completely different MOS. Just want to make that clear. But uh, enlisted in the infantry, got, got sent to Alaska after airborne school. So I uh, was with the 4th Brigade, 25th Infantry Division, uh, Geronimo, the dog company, 3509. And I went to a couple different schools while there in cold ass Alaska, Fort Richardson. Uh, got deployed in 2012. Went to Afghanistan for about a year. Came back, and I was still I was still kind of just this like big dude, you know, like about 180, 185. I'm only 5'8", so that's kind of a lot on my frame. And I was like, you know, I was feeling great, like just ripping weights up and stuff you know but i was actually getting hurt from lifting weights though my shoulders were hurting my wrists were hurting like all my joints were getting all jacked up and uh and while i was deployed one of my buddies had dabbled in jujitsu he's a white belt so he showed me a few things i was like oh this is really cool but then uh i had about six months left in maybe and we get to do this this combat kind of training And I'm like, oh, yes, absolutely. You know, like that's right up my alley. Um, and so we get into this and me and my buddy volunteer. So we get to go do this training and it's like full fledged, like fighting, but in your in your camos and everything. Mm-hmm. Basically, it starts out first round is jujitsu. Second round is like kickboxing. 
a third round's everything. And then fourth round is like cage if you make it that far. Hmm. So, we, so we got to train for maybe a month before going into this tournament. And so besides my buddy that, that was in the same unit with me in Dogho, we, we met another guy who, who kind of changed my life for jujitsu, and that's uh, Jason Hayden. Uh, so he was in another unit, but I met him through this combat, through this combat thing that we were doing and he was kicking my ass. I was, you know, 185 big buff dude. And this guy was just getting me over and over and over in, in a guillotine at first. And then it's like, okay, I can correct that easy. You know, tuck, tucking my double mm-hmm. a little bit better, tucking my chin, moving that angle, hitting him with my forehead. And then he was just killing me with this, something that he called a lion tamer. And it was just this like this compression choke, and it was like a, a, and then he would also do just this like jaw crank, and he's killing me. I was like, this guy's like 140, and he's like a little midget, you know? Yep. Uh, and just kicking my ass. I think he was a purple belt at the time when he had just joined. Hmm. Um, but so that changed it for me. I was like, well, screw these weights. I don't need those anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hop in the mats. And me and him became became friends uh, for the rest of my time that I was in. Uh, I still talk to him today. He's doing great in jujitsu, um, and that kind of just that locked it in for me. I knew I knew I wanted to get into jujitsu right after that. It's so funny how many people we've met who uh, I mean both Haydens for different reasons. Oh yeah, like they're just uh, well, there's three of them, uh, but they're all upstanding human beings, and everybody who I've said anything remotely to about who have lived like when you mentioned alaska i was like you had to have run into hayden i i didn't know that for sure but i'm just like you just your past you probably would be like what's up what's up but to know that he would be such a transformative person you know he is uh not just a phenomenal jujitsu competitor but he's also competed at uh mma he's one of the guys who gets a heel hook in a fucking mma fight so screw that clown and then He's also a combat jiu-jitsu vet, and uh, he's he's dope, dude. I can tell you this. I'm about 185 and uh, not in shape, and he works the <laughs> hell out of me, too, still to this day. Like, he comes, and he's so happy to see me, uh, and I think it's maybe because I make fun of his mustache at times, <laughs> it's or I make so fun of his hair. It's so much cooler, though. He's, he is a, he's an advocate for the Filipino mustache. I could never grow that. <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, maybe not, but... Uh, you know, as somebody with strong facial hair, I think he just looks at me and he's intimidated. And I get it, dude. It's fine. But, uh, no, he's he's a quality human being. I'm so glad that he's somebody uh, who is uh, such an instrumental part in your life. We, we Hearing that they had such a very strong um, influence in your life in terms of uh, the military, what is it that you feel that you were able to pull from that experience into your fight career? Uh, well, easily that strength and muscle aren't everything like so that's that's the immediate thing that came to mind that you know i didn't have to be this giant guy or look a certain way to be able to fight if anything the technique is what matters and that's what should draw people to jujitsu because that's that's what you get out of it is that that the art itself is supposed to be doing the work you just have to learn a few of the finer things about it and then once you learn those things you can you can see how they they work really easily and, and you with can, a lot less effort you can also Im- build that as part of your game you know you, exactly. you're going to create your own version of a strategy that's going to carry you and, and become your wheelhouse if you would yeah and i think i think uh kind of at the purple belt level is when you see that you take mm-hmm. all of these different techniques that you've gotten good at or gotten terrible at or done the wrong way <laughs> sure. and you kind of build your game up with that and you're able to mix in so many other things based off of that game just like based off of these three moves that you may have chained together you can have just so many different kind of ways to get into those moves and you start seeing them from everywhere and Mm -hmm. i think that's kind of at that level and then you kind of just continue to build that game and then you just keep moving up absolutely i want to ask this uh you know i I know that we're on a time schedule with your battery so we're, (laughs) we're racing the clock here but i want to ask this because um i don't know if you're able to tell us what is coming up next for you um, but I did want to ask, you did go to the MMA awards, the world MMA awards. What was I that did. like, man? It was, it was great. Um, I was there for Al- Alima Leigh McFarlane. She was nominated for female fighter of the year for Bellator. And she, she actually got to announce one of the awards too. So it was pretty exciting. Like I was just 
But I mean, I was mostly the purse guy. Sure. You know? So I was just like holding the clutch and everything. But you so did it great, pretty. man. You <laughs> you fulfilled all of your duties uh, akin to one Miss America, just yeah, sitting there smiling. Uh, that and means so much. As you were looking around, like even some of the photos you took, you're just like, I'm just here as the purse guy. And I was like, yeah, you could do worse. Yeah. So, I mean, so for being there as just the purse guy, it was, it was great because there was just, you're surrounded by so many people who have accomplished so many things. Sure. And for fighting, you know, and it's just all these people that are in, like just in that environment and working hard for their dreams and like actually achieving them, actually getting some accomplishments being noticed for, for fighting, for doing what they love, you know. So yeah. it was a moment of like, wow, like I, I could be here. Mm. And so I really appreciated just being able to be there surrounded by so many, so many people that are just, I mean, so influential in this kind of world. And sure. And are trying to be more influential on on the actual world too. Like Brian's or Orte- Brian Ortega's speech was was great. He, he seems yeah. like just a great stand up guy and everything. I was really angry I missed that fight. We found out right after that award show actually. That's that's but. such a bummer, dude. I've always <laughs> yeah. said you know, and Brian Ortega, uh, <laughs> somebody put a great meme. I think it was a Strangle Squad. That's like. Uh, Men hide your ladies yeah, around this yeah. guy, and I thought that's like a really funny the guitar, joke. Doing jiu-jitsu him like... in a cowboy hat, just like <laughs> riding a horse. It's like Come every on, who single does, who does all these yeah. things. And we had one of our friends who was giving him shit and being like, hey, "He's not that pretty." And I was like, yeah. "Dog, he looks like a precious unicorn that we need to protect with those cornrows." <laughs> that every he gets there, like he just does that, like like real innocent blink, like, "What's up?" I'm Brian Ortega. <laughs> and he, I'm like, it's Dog. crazy too how he kind of just blew up out of nowhere, just from guillotines from hell like dude put him on the I've, map and then... i've have enough uh, mutual friends who his guillotines every single one of those people just speaks the truth and it's yeah. you know it's been nice to watch him on this resurgence back in the ufc putting in the time and one of the things that really upset me is there were people who were saying he should have taken just any fight uh to get his show money and it's like dog that was the whole reason frankie edgar didn't get his title fight and to be fair frankie edgar had already been there for I brian think, ortega i think for me personally yeah. to see him throw away a title shot that could literally change his life and especially like you mentioned change other people's lives with the influence he could have is i think a bad choice yeah but i think at the same time a lot of people don't realize at that level i'm sure the preparation is a little different for something where you're just going like hey let me fight anybody yeah. I'm sure, like his reaction times are based on something that that Holloway might throw, yeah. Uh, rather than a certain combo that Frankie Edgar might throw a little weird or something, you know. And to be perfectly uh, honest, Holloway's uh, his style is so so fluy, uh, fluid, and funky yeah. in itself that it's like training for that specialized version of it is is an entire camp that people just say exactly. get rid of. Yeah, and then imagine like there's always just that puncher's chance. Yep. So imagine even if he like just gets knocked out and then there all of a sudden there goes his his legacy of being undefeated, being able to get the belt like he wasn't able to win the interim title. So yeah. I thought it was a, a smart move on his his part. You know, he, he's he got plenty of time and I think that fight will still happen. So I think Looking so, too. To I, I, I feel, though, that uh, it looks like Max is he might be out for a little bit. But I, I can tell you this as a fan belt, no belt. I would love to see that fight. True. Absolutely. Uh, so that's awesome, dude. And, and you were able to enjoy yourself uh, a little bit. It was after your fight. So you get to yeah. enjoy yourself and do that. Yeah. So I went, yeah, you know, I, I mean, mostly I was just continually being the, the purse holder for a little while longer. <laughs> uh, I mean, well, she accomplished a lot more, you know, she defended her belt the day before the, the day before my fight. So I was kind of just happy to be a part of that and, you know, uh, kind of just put my belt aside and be like hey i'm ready to start training again for the next one anyways Mm. you know well speaking of do we know when that is are we allowed to say when is it coming up all that good stuff uh yeah so i'm I'm not sure if we're allowed to say right now but there's definitely uh another one coming up uh me and nadine will be on the same card defending our belts in las vegas again um we're just uh actually yeah nadine's is set for her rematch Mm -hmm. in, in vegas uh september September 14th, actually, yeah, I think we're allowed to announce that. But mine so far, the opponent isn't locked in, but there are, okay. I'm pretty sure there are two guys lined up for for the title defense, and I'll take either one. So I'm ready to, I'm ready to go get back in this camp. I That's mean, dope, dude. We're, my we're life s- is camp, basically, now. 
I mean, here's the thing, dude. <laughs> you could have chose a lot of different uh, career avenues to go through, but y- you chose the one where you go, all right, for this many years, this is what it is. Uh, a holiday suck. <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> friends and family. Uh, time out, everybody. Got to do some stuff. Oh, man. Dude, I love it. I mean, um, I, I actually quit my job in May to, uh, awesome. to pursue this. So Didn't you just graduate recently, too? <laughs> Yeah, so I graduated from USD with my degree in accounting, um, and straight out of college, I, I got a I got a job with one of the big four accounting accounting groups. Uh, worked with them, did all my training and everything. Was like five six months in, I knew immediately it wasn't for me, and that I needed to pursue my dreams. So it's badass, dude. I saved up a little bit of money, you know, enough to live off of for a few months or so. Uh, I quit. And then kept kept trying to have these fights happen while I was actually while I was actually working, but uh, <laughs> people kept dropping out. So I finally locked in a fight, uh, got on it. I quit my job. I I burned my business cards in a sacred fire after a sweat lodge session, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, moved on. You know, went towards the the fight life now, and that's that's what I'm all about. Good for you, man. That's awesome. And you know what? The nice part is this. You spend a nice part giving part of yourself to our country. You spend a good amount of your time uh, going and furthering your own education. You know, you've got things that you can fall back on, obviously. And the fact that, you know, the fight window exists for so many years and there's not really a second guessing. And knowing what I know about you and so many people who are in the fight business, if you if you feel compelled to do it, you have to. Or else you, you drive your brain crazy, and then when you want to do it, you can't. Yeah. So it, it, it's all completely a valid choice, yeah. and, and rightfully so, with you having a title now. Yeah, I mean, don't ignore the signs. You know, There are people that there, there are constant signs and signals for them to be able to pursue their dreams and be happy. And mm. it'll be hard, of course, Like, but that's, that's kind of part of the reward that you have to go through these difficult situations to kind of get to that next level. Mm. If you're stagnant the entire time, you're not facing any adversity, then of course you're not going to grow at all. And then you're just going to stay in the same level and then just kind of be dissatisfied with yourself. So you got to push yourself a little bit and recognize the signs and opportunities that come along. And that unhappiness was kind of like a, Hey, you know, go on and fight people. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and it was it was hard being in an environment where I was just sitting at a desk all day, like 10, 12 hours a day, like at a computer, just like, this is great, you know? <laughs> like, and then the only thing that kept me alive was, from that was wanting to go and train afterwards. Yeah. That brought me back to life. Well, keep in mind, it's probably also super weird for the rest of your colleagues. I'm pretty sure all of whom which are not going out and ultimate fighting people uh, <laughs> shortly after getting off of work. Well, the weirdest thing was how I was just trying to push them all to kind of pursue their dreams and stuff. Like, this is what you want to do, man? Like, you want to just be someone's, like, little bitch for hours and hours and just running these boring numbers and stuff? Like, this, like it's not even a real job. What are you doing, you know? I mean, I love learning and everything, sure. but when you're sitting there just doing repetitive stuff over and over that isn't really helping you get anywhere, it, and it's all about the paycheck, it's not worth it. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, there are so many different perspectives of it. You get people who put in the time for any number of reasons. Some people yeah. actually do love it. I kudos. There to are there are a few, and I'm I'm happy for them because <laughs> I don't know how they do it. Uh, listen, dog, I'm I'm not an accountant <laughs> for a number of reasons, but I, I love the fact that you were able to take that, get what you needed out of it, and again, you can always fall back on it, and that's that's the best part about it is you know you never lose that training. No, but I'm not saying fall back on that per se. But those no, skills too. that you can always continue using forward for any number of avenues, especially yeah. you see so many fighters have uh, second and third lives as entrepreneurs or uh, doing their own business. And I think those are yeah. the applicable skills that you can take forward. Um, well, that's dope, dude. I mean, we're looking forward to that. Uh, so Nadine's date is when? I believe it's September 14th and we'll and be fighting be on, on the same card. And you're on yeah. the same card. Okay, great. So we're looking forward to that. Let's do this. At some point after that fight, I know I've got to find a time to get down to San Diego because I know that if I let you go too far out, you're already going to book another fight. 
Absolutely. And I have this weird thing where I'm like, listen, I'm not saying I'm going to beat the shit out of a fighter. I'm going to say I'm such a klutz, I'm going to fall on them. And I'm going to do something to them. It's going to be like, oh, God, no, I fell on his leg. And now he can't <laughs> there goes your fight. ACL. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. people are going to be like, Raph, what'd you do? And I was like, just be fat on him. <laughs> There's nothing really technical about what I did. So uh, I will find a time uh, to head on down to San Diego. Yeah, anytime. You're welcome. I appreciate that, man. Uh, can we uh, do a solid and, and shout out any sponsors before we get you on out of here? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'd like to thank my gym, of course, Victory MMA. Uh, a new sponsor of mine, Allegiance Clothing Company, Roy specifically. I'd like to shout you out and say thank you so much for just hooking it up with a lot of great gear. Uh, chilling out, Cryo, for keeping me keeping me healthy, helping out with all those cool little equipments you got in there with that, that freezing chamber that I try to stay in for as long as I can. Um, and Jocko for just keeping the intensity in the gym going, you know, just always keeping everybody motivated and on another level and just all my teammates for doing the same and helping me get better and then tough enough. So here's my question though. I know you've got a good Cairo. Uh, I know you've got, um, uh, awesome sponsors who've been helping you out to get you there. Uh, my only question is, do, do you have other ones that aren't just apparel? Do you have other people who could like help you out and take care of you, my man? Um, yeah, like just health wise, you know, like I said, uh, chilling out cryo keeps me, keeps me all right with the, with the whole little freeze therapy that we get going on, little Wim Hof kind of exercises. That's dope, dude. I've heard uh, amazing things about one him, Wim Hof, but maybe I can help. You know, uh, one of my gifts is we like to do a segment on our show called, um, why you should sponsor this athlete. And uh, I feel I've got enough information. Now, here's the thing. Nick knows nothing about what I'm going to say, which I'm sure terrifies him to some degree. A uh, small amount, yeah. yeah <laughs> small a amount. A little bit. Guy fights in a cage for a living, and yet somehow afraid of a brown dude with a hat and a microphone. But here's what I'm going to say to you guys right now. Sponsors. Potential sponsors. Look at me. Do you see the specimen who is on this podcast right now obviously i'm talking about myself but the other one next <laughs> to me on this picture frame the thing you should know about nick battis is this one served our country number two fights in a cage and does it well three gave up a lucrative accounting job so that he could follow his dreams four he holds a purse at award show not just any kind of purse, but like a flashy purse. One that kind of makes you wonder, like, is uh, is Nick, uh, I mean, it's fine if he is, but like, is he? Because like, it goes a little too well. And number five, here's the biggest one. Uh, every single human being who I've encountered who knows him speaks well of him. His team speaks well of him. Every time I've gone to visit and I'm not even around him i have heard fantastic things uh for him so he's not afraid to go ahead and make uh not a fool of himself but he kind of has this thing where sometimes he's a model and i haven't given him any <laughs> shit about that right now oh, but if man. you're looking for somebody who's going to be a model and uh pose for those products uh in a very nice way i'm just saying you could do worse but you're not going to do any better than one nick battis <laughs> Yeah, plenty of room on, on my shorts for this next fight. Uh -oh. I mean, they Look missed a few opportunities right there. I mean, my, my butt was just showing the entire time. I like those little tight shorts. So, <laughs> And, hey, on the, on the purse thing, I mean, there are, no, there are no lengths too far you can go to be a gentleman, okay? Yeah, absolutely, right. 100%. And, it's, being a gentleman, I hear you. And it matched my tie. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> couldn't, go t couldn't be too bad. It wasn't too bad. But you know thank what? you for thank you for that. I I really didn't expect that. I expected uh, I expected a lot more insults instead. But you're just talking me up instead, and it's really throwing me through a loop here. Yeah, I know. I'm quite <laughs> good at that. Uh, one of the things that's really hard, I think, for him to understand is, yeah, when we finished and we had a nice little break in our our connection right now, there was a moment where I looked at some photos and I said, yeah, I didn't give him shit for half of these photos. Because there's a photo of you where you're in an elevator, I think looking at a mirror or something, and you've got your purple belt, and you've got that fighter look, but also a little bit of the suspenders and the accountant look. And I thought to myself, you know what? He really got away with murder on this podcast. <laughs> I really did, honestly. There, And you could go a little deeper than that, and I'm sure there's a lot more you could find to go off of, uh, especially with, my, with some of my 
uh, graduation photos that I had taken. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I didn't even remember any of those. God damn, dude. You're a weird guy. But you know what the nice part is? <laughs> is at the very least, uh, you got a good sense of humor about it. And, and I really do mean this, though. Um, you know, y- you are very well respected and uh, you-, you got a good sense of, uh, of uh, personality with uh, responsibility with you. And that is hard to find because uh, sometimes people amp up the personality but forget how to actually be a human being sometimes. So uh, it is nice to see that, man. And we're very happy uh, to see you succeeding. So we're looking forward to seeing you get back in the cage. That's going to be September 14th, we believe, over so, in uh, Las Vegas for Tough Enough. You're going to want to see him and uh, Nady. And then I saw you guys have been on multiple cards together. Yeah, we were on another one, uh, five, five, uh, 559 Fights up in Fresno. That was that was a really great experience as well. Y'all are. Yeah. yeah that's a, that's a yeah, good. Just tearing stuff up, man. Just keep know. moving. That's a that's a great dynamic duo to have going there. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, Nick, I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. We very much appreciate your time, and uh, we hope to see you again, sir. And maybe after the tough enough, we'll get in touch with you again, sir. Thank you so much for having me. And again, remember, welcome any time to come in. Let's catch some rolls. Probably not, but you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna do it, and then I'm gonna 100 percent be like, yeah, dude, no. No, you're you're skinny 155 now, but now it's all pure muscle. You used to be that 185, <laughs> and you just replace it with muscle. I'm not looking for a hard time. Nah, it'll be great. Come on, we'll get some technique. You'll throw, you'll show me the the crab, the Boston crab, and everything. I'll only hurt you a little bit. <laughs> Here's what I was gonna say. I I will 100 roll with you, but uh, by the end of it, the the nice caveat I was gonna say is we'll give you a finishing move by the end of it. So that way you can terrorize right, people around for. the gym because uh, I have a feeling, and it's one of those things that I occasionally say to people, which is, oh, I regret teaching you this. <laughs> there was one guy I taught a pro wrestling move to, and he was terrorizing people with it. And I was like, you need to chill the fuck out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, really? I was like, I that know sounds how like to... my kind of move. Well, there's multiple moves, but the hard part is I know your style, so I know... Uh, you know, there, there's some good variations from there. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say thank you again to Nick Bass. Thank you, Raf. Appreciate it. Have a good one.